Hey guys, I'm going to be doing a Leadworks tutorial today. Uh, it's going to be Leadworks 3.1, and we're going to be making a jump pad. The jump pad um, is pretty simple. Here's the jump pad. Jump up to here. We've got our character right here, and a zombie right here, and he is an AI, so he will attack us. So, yeah, let's just pop right in with our jump pad. Um, go over to the Assets tab crew to the objects physics we're going to want to go ahead and create a new script rename jump pad tutorial read yeah like see this right here it's out this nice. and scripts it's re rename i don't see what's happening here script rename jump pad to do I want a new script lab works thank you okay it worked finally all right so just clear out your collision and all you have to do to make a jump app is type n titty entity um uh, Add force. Go and add your forces in. And that's it. That is it. Now if we go ahead and actually we need to do one more thing and that would be attaching this to our jump pad, which is right here. Going to tap the attach that. I made mine be in physics. Like I said, Leadworks creates all these amazing scripts which one's ours which one is ours da, 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 da. um new lewis i don't know which one's ours is it this one no it's not that one it's oh, i i'm so confused right now um um clear that out physics is it there we go there now it appears Maybe it appeared last time. Maybe I was just losing it. Anyway, all right, let's go ahead and play our game. <laughs> Boom, jump pad. All right, now let's, since every, everyone likes having a customized jump pad, so let's go ahead and make a customized jump pad, shall we? I'm going to go ahead and create a new vector three variable that is a local variable of script and I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, jump force and I'm gonna make it to be equal to a string because it's gonna be a vector three there you go and then we have a new vector three I'm also just gonna rename it to jump force with a space now it has a space there and now I'll go ahead and use that instead of the other method so that I can type it in over there in the script tab. And you need self when you have a variable that is under a script. So, um, and if you're wondering what a vector 3 is, it's basically a variable. It's basically a variable with three values like this basically that's basically what vector 3 looks like um, so yeah that will go ahead and use this but I want the option to also be able to disable or enable collisions for selective objects so that means I'm going to make a another variable I will go ahead and call this selective collision selective collision <laughs> and now I will go ahead and obviously make this be false by default. And I'm going to make it a bool. Name this to be selective collision just like that and uh, you need to make sure that's spelled right there we go now we have this nice thing true and false box 
Now I need one more variable, and that's going to be a script. And it's going to be my collision object. And this object is going to be equal to null because it's going to be a entity. And I'm going to name it And there we go, collision object. Uh, doesn't want to, let's see, nil entity. Ugh, I keep forgetting that R. There we go. Now here we have a little menu here. Basically, the logic of this is going to be, if this is on, collide with this object only, uh, uh, make apply the force to this object only. So allow the jump pad to only be active to this guy. If this is off, allow it to be active to everyone, including AIs. Now, to make this, it's very, very simple. To, uh, um, now, we just want to have an if statement. As if statement is going to first check whether elective collision uh, is on. And if it's on and our entity, uh, entity, entity is equal to our collision object then do what's in here um, make sure we have a period here however I only want this to be equal to the um, collision object, so I'm just going to add that there, make sure that's applied like that. Now I'm also going to make a else if statement, um, and this will go ahead and check if the uh, selective collision is off, oops, is equal to false. And if it's equal to false, do what's in here. So, and what's in here is going to be entity add force. Then it's going to be our self dot jump force. Just like that. And hopefully that works. So let's go ahead and try it out, shall we? All right, let's go and save that. And let's see if it works. So let's make sure we haven't broken anything. And just leave all that blank. And we did break something. What did we break? Then expect it, right. Um, with this, you just need to put then. And then, whoops, not there next to your statements depending on what type of statement is and there we go so it's not really broken anything just something I forgot to add and uh, okay so that did not work right mm. yes I should probably uh, it's a string number expected yeah, okay. Um, let's just put the, the nil. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's going to work, um, but it might. Yep, that'll work just fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, you might want to make sure there's values in here or you'll get an error. So we're going to go 65 and 60. Now play. Boom, and we have it. It works. I just didn't hold my W key long enough. And that works great.
There we go, okay. And now let's go ahead and make sure our selective collision works, and we'll do that by making the U3D mesh, which is the AI, only collide with it. We need to make sure the checkbox works by itself as well, so come on over here. Boom, okay, that obviously works. It's obviously having a little trouble there, so let's just go ahead and... Hmm. He's having a little trouble. There we go, got him. Huh, now that's an interesting bug. Anyway, um, you can actually see that we can't jump on it, but if we disable that selective collision, we can now jump on it freely. Just like this. Boom, and so can he. So be careful of that. Uh, or you can just make it so only we can. Or we can just make it so only we can. So yeah, uh, we got some serious power here. Boom, we're up and I can't get down, but it works. But if you want to have multiple collision objects, let me just tell you how we do it. I won't actually do it. Obviously, you're going to create multiple of these collisions. So you're going to create multiple of these. That way you can have collision object be like collision object 2 or whatever. And then collision object 2. And then you can have it like this since it's not dynamic. And then all you would really have to do is check again for that to be an entity. Um, to actually see how you would check it, that is, uh, I'm going to leave that to you guys so that you can learn. Uh, go to the Leadworks command reference and look at entity. It'll tell you exactly how you need to check this. Uh, check against this. Just need to know what type it is. It's very simple other than that. But anyway, um, uh, that is how you shall may, uh, that's how you'd make a like that. Anyway, I hope it's been a good tutorial. Sorry it was a little bit longer than I hoped, but anyway, see you in my next tutorial.